Hi guys, Black Fox here. Another video and today we'll talk about the glide slope interception from above. Now normally when you fly an ILS approach you will intercept the localizer first and at that point you will be below the glide slope i.e. approach the glide slope from below. However, there might be instances when very short radar vectors um, or just a miscalculation of the descent profile has led you to a point where you are actually above the glide slope and hence the question arises what do you need to do in such a case and uh, as always there is a procedure for this so let's have a look at it now there are certain limitations to this and one of them is that you need to be established on the localizer in order to do this procedure and of course also the general aircraft stabilization criteria must be adhered to now we'll talk about the stabilization criteria a little bit later on um, for now just have a look at the procedure and once you realize that you are above the glide slope, you should take actions. And that is, you should um, reduce the airspeed and uh, get into config two and the landing gear down. That will give you the best rate of descent in order to capture the glide slope from above. Once you are in configuration and you've been cleared for the approach, make sure that you arm the approach mode on the flight control unit and then set an altitude on the FCU that is above the present aircraft altitude. That is very important because um, as long as you're not in the glide slope uh, mode, um, the aircraft will capture the selected altitude. And that means you might um, have an unwanted um, level of in this case. So make sure that um, you have selected an altitude that is higher than the present one. The last thing to do is um, select the vertical speed mode and then select between 1500 and 2000 feet per minute um, and be careful not to exceed the maximum flap extended speed. So once that has all been done, um, you just monitor the progress of that intercept. And of course, there are limitations to what the aircraft can handle in such a case. You can also try to use the speed brake. Um, it's not recommended to use a speed brake when you have more than config 2. Also uh, be aware that when you use speed brakes, um, the aircraft roll will be considerably more sensitive. And also the aircraft uh, may experience uh, quite a large buffet. Okay, so what are the limitations um, in trying to intercept the glide slope uh, from above? Well, obviously it has to do with energy management. And um, like we said, config two gear down um, causes a lot of drag on the aircraft, helps you to increase the rate of descent. And um, then the next limit is of course um, the flaps extended speed. If we try to visualize this, then you will see the following picture where you have the normal glide path of three degrees. And the further out you are from the airfield, the more deviation you can actually recover. And that has to do obviously with the maximum allowed descent rates. And uh, as we spoke about the um, maximum flaps extended speed. And so the further out you are, the higher the rate of descent, which is allowed to capture. And um, the closer in you get to the airfield, this margin becomes less and less. Now on the top left corner, I've um, written down some typical maximum allowed descent rates. And interesting is the layer between 3000 and 2000 feet above ground, where the maximum allowed descent rate is 2000 feet a minute. Then when you get uh, to the next layer between 2000 feet and uh, 1000 feet AGL, it is 1500 feet per minute. And then below 1000 feet uh, per minute above the ground, you should keep to a maximum descent rate of 1000 feet per minute. 
And that is why the possible maximum deviation gets less and less as uh, you get closer to the airfield and hence closer to the ground. Now also there are some other rules um, in the aviation world um, where the aircraft should be stabilized on final approach at 1000 feet above threshold elevation. And that is, for example, um, the landing configuration should be established, gear and flaps. The aircraft should be at a target speed, maximum view approach plus 10 knots. The rate of descent should be within the given limits. Um, you should have adequate power on the engines. Now, the engines take a lot of time to spool up out of idle values and hence um, aim for about at least 40% power in case you need to do a missed approach. Then also you should be on the correct vertical path, i.e. the glide slope uh, difference shouldn't be more than half a dot. And then also you should be established on the correct lateral path. However, this has to be the case um, latest 500 feet above the threshold. Um, it can be lower than that um, in case the procedure requires that. Um, there are some airports where this is the case. Um, for example, Nice, runway 2 to right. And here you will be established um, below 500 feet on the uh, center line. And uh, as always, this is just for info if you would like to use procedures which are a little bit closer to reality. So much true theory, let's now dive into the cockpit and uh, use this procedure. And uh, we're in the approach towards the Austrian airport of Graz and uh, we'll be going through two scenarios. First of all, we'll do the procedure that I have just explained and then uh, I'll do another approach and I'll show you a more extreme maneuver where you can recover quite a large uh, difference to the glide slope. Okay, so we're gonna turn towards the localizer. On the left there, we can see the airport. And so for now, let's say that air traffic control has cleared us only for the localizer, um, not for the full approach yet. That may be the case due to traffic or some terrain situation. Okay, so we have Lockstar. And here would be the point where we would intercept the glide slope. However, since we're not clear for the approach yet, we will get above the glide slope. And like I said, once you realize this, make sure you start reducing the airspeed and hence reduce the energy level of the aircraft. Okay, now we get cleared for the approach, so we'll arm the approach mode and select a higher altitude on the flight control unit. And of course we will select a vertical speed now in order to try to capture the glide slope. Remember to select flaps 2 and gear down, increase the drag of the aircraft and uh, in this case avoid accelerating towards VFE. Now we can see that at the uh, final approach point we're almost two dots high and then the FS Labs A320, this is about the maximum deviation that you can recover. Uh, notice that I've increased the flap setting to full and uh, now with all this drag I can uh, increase the descent rate to 2000 feet per minute. Remembering though that between 2000 feet above uh, ground and 1000 feet above ground we have to reduce that descent rate to a maximum of 1500 feet per minute. Now we're approaching the glide slope very nicely. So this looks uh, pretty good. So we get 1500 feet above ground. Glide slope star. And we check the go around altitude once more. In this case, 5000 feet. So we'll just leave that in. And now the airspeed is coming back and um, we can see that we are actually fulfilling all the stabilization criteria. So we're on glide slope, on the lateral path, power is adequate, full flap setting, gears down. 
and so we are fully stabilized at 1,000 feet above the threshold. 1,000. And that's how the normal procedure is uh, done in order to capture the glide slope from above. And before we get to the more extreme maneuver, um, let me just try to land the aircraft here in guards. All right, so now we come to the second um, method. And um, in this one, we are a lot higher in the approach than um, previously. And from the rules laid out um, with the maximum descent rates, if you are very high in the approach, the goal is to reduce to the final configuration, i.e. config full, go down and reduce the energy level as much as possible and then use that height above ground and use the maximum permissible descent rates to quickly reduce the altitude and intercept the glide slope. Okay, so this time we're in Salzburg and uh, about 2,000 feet high at the final approach point. We already got the gear down, flaps is uh, config full and we are in manual flight. And so now we can use the excess altitude to um, dive down. Presently have uh, 2,600 feet per minute. And 2,000 feet high at the final approach point is uh, pretty much pushing the envelope of uh, the maximum deviation that you can recover. But again, at this point, you will need final configuration and the landing gear down to achieve this. You can see that now that we are closer to the airport and in the layer between uh, 3,000 and 2,000 feet above ground, the maximum descent rate is 2,000 feet per minute. And then once we are in the layer 2,000 to 1,000 feet above the ground, we will have a maximum descent rate of 1,500 feet per minute. Now the glide slope is approaching. So maintaining 1500 feet per minute. And we're aiming for the stabilization point 1000 feet above the threshold elevation. So we're just about to make that. Here we are approaching the glide slope. So we'll reduce the descent rate. Now the speed will drop back. Alright, so we take the normal pitch and power values and then enjoy the landing here in Salzburg.
500, 100 above. 400. Minimum. 300. A touchdown and we have uh, spoilers, reverse green and D setter. Seventy knots. And we'll take the next taxiway to the right. Okay, so before we finish this video, let me just uh, recap that the two procedures I have shown uh, differ somewhat and in the sense that the first approach is flown with the autopilot in the virtual speed mode and the second approach due to the more extreme nature um, is flown manually and the reason is simple um, the autopilot system just takes a lot longer to react to new settings um, especially with the vertical speed. Okay, so this concludes the video on uh, glide slope interception from above. I hope you have enjoyed the video. If you have, uh, please leave a like. Um, if you have questions, put them in the comment section down below and I'll try to answer them as quickly as possible. As always, my friends, thank you very much for your awesome support and until the next time, happy landings.